Welcome to Skip the Queue, a podcast for people working in or working with visitor attractions. I'm your host, Kelly Molson. Each episode, I speak with industry experts from the attractions world. In today's episode, I speak with Jacob Thompson, Business Development Manager at Attractions IO. We discuss exactly why your attraction needs an app and the incredible positives of going digital from an environmental perspective. If you like what you hear, subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and all the usual channels by searching Skip the Queue. Jacob, thank you for coming on the Skip the Queue podcast this morning. It's lovely to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, listened to it for a long time, so it's an absolute pleasure to uh, to finally be on it as well. Oh, I love that. I love it when guests come on and they already love the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll be kinder to you with the icebreaker questions because of that or maybe not please do please do <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get cracking I want to know what your favorite movie quote is we're going to need a bigger boat I think it's uh it's got to be hasn't it um iconic um and and I find myself using that that expression a lot especially with uh yeah with how busy things are <laughs> currently um I think it, it kind of translates very well Love it. Yeah, that is a perfect one for uh, how we're all feeling right now. Jacob and I had a little conversation just before we started recording about how busy we all are right now. Um, There seems to be an influx of very positive new leads and inquiries, which is wonderful. um, But also, I think that's probably sums up how we're feeling, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. If you could get rid of one food... So nobody ever had to eat this food ever again. What would it be? What would you destroy? Oh, uh, Stilton. Oh, um, oh, is that is that is that going to be an unpopular? Opinion? Can I use that as my unpopular opinion? <laughs> it's just uh, when you have a cheese platter, um, it, the, the smell just ruins it for me. And I think just get rid of it. There's plenty of other cheeses to choose from. So uh, that. Can I use that as my own popular opinion as well? No, maybe? you can't. <laughs> <laughs> we were getting on so well up until that point as well. I'm sorry. I feel I'm like sorry. you just Had ruined it. <laughs> wow. Okay. This might not go as well. All right. <laughs> okay. Tell me something that you are not very good at. Oh, there's there's a lot of things. I think maybe this is a little bit deep, but um, I think reflecting on previous achievements, uh, I think I often get so focused on what needs to be done that actually I forget all the, all of the things that I have done already um and I think yeah maybe that's a bit deep and philosophical for, for what you're looking for but that's uh yeah that's what I go with that's a really good one because I think that that is a, a good reminder that we all need to celebrate the small wins don't we we really need to take time out and I think that's that's quite a common challenge with a lot of us I, I get I I am exactly the same as you I'm always focused on what's next what's next what's next and then don't sit back and go oh actually we did a really good job there definitely pat ourselves on the back a little bit need to do it a little bit more definitely all right okay um your unpopular opinion not about cheese oh so I've probably already alienated uh, half of the listeners (laughs) already probably more than half but um oh yeah what what uh, what could I give you that's not too controversial I think firstly I fully get behind the England team and really get into it when it comes to the World Cup and the Euros but when I put them side by side I think rugby is the better sport over football so sorry if I offend anyone there Okay. All right. No, that's fine. I think this has come up before as well, actually, that rugby is the far superior sport to football. I'm a massive football fan. Yeah. So I'm going to disagree with you, but I think there's plenty of people that will agree (laughs) with your unpopular opinion. Let us know. Let us know what you think about that one, listeners. Um, Jacob, tell us a little bit about you and what your role is at Attractions.io. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm the business development manager for Attractions IO. So basically, my role is to speak with um, attractions at an early stage to understand, obviously, what what we can help them with, what they're struggling with at the moment. Um, and I've been doing that for the past uh, two years now. So uh, a, a relative rookie in the industry compared to some of the uh, big hitters that you've had to join you on the podcast. But um, I think. Yeah, it's really just I'm here to, to help attractions, especially not just with, with a mobile app, but just their approach to, to their digital strategy, how they can engage their guests, how they can better communicate them and, and obviously, most importantly, create better guest experiences. And, and that's what I'm here to do. Did you come from an attractions background? Or have you got a slightly different 
different yeah kind of so them. so i'm still uh, still pretty uh young so um i left school with not really a clear direction on what i wanted to do but i thought if i give everything a go work hard at it and see see what opportunities present um, themselves to me so um after leaving school, I quickly moved into to the, the tech background um, and working with, uh, with mobile app providers um, for conferences and events. And after a few changes and, uh, and moves, um, I found myself at Attractions.io. And I think, obviously, there was huge imposter syndrome uh, entering the industry because I know that I learned very quickly how kind of tight knit it is. But I guess I kind of went in with the mindset of if I've been visiting Attractions since well, as young as I can remember. So I've got the experience. I know what a good guest, guest experience feels like. Um, and I've just tried to bring that that to the role. But yeah, so still very, very new to the industry. But you've got real world experience. So that's exactly important. And I love that you mentioned um, customer experience there, because that's yeah. what I really love about Attractions IO. So for all the content that you produce, for the, the webinars that, that I've watched that um, yourself and Mark have, have spoken on is that you are all about improving the customer experience. And I love that because that's exactly what Rubber Cheese is all about as well. But it's interesting because we come from slightly different ways of looking at that. So I guess we're yeah. all about that kind of pre-visit experience um, and making people feel excited about what they're potentially buying and what they're potentially going to see. And then you guys take over with the yeah. app visitor experience. So we're very complimentary. Um I've got loads of questions around what you do today, but I think the most important question that I want to know is why does an attraction need an app? Yeah, so I think there's kind of two two sides to this. Um, I think firstly, and this has been largely because of the pandemic, but but it's it's always changing, is, is guest expectations. So I think we all know that we spent however long in lockdown, everything to turn digital for us, our whole lives and, and experiences were, were digital. And we got very used to um, being served personalized content, whether that's Netflix giving recommendations, personalized ads, Amazon offering discounts on products we've viewed, things like that. It, it shaped that, that experience and the expectations we now have is that wherever we go, we want that same personalized experience. It makes us feel special. It creates a better experience. And um, I think also, there's now more digital natives, so people that have grown up with technology than, than there has been previously. And I think uh, I know for one that, that I'm quite comfortable and happy to, to order um, when I go to McDonald's or, or Weatherspoons um, or wherever I may go, ordering um, through through my phone. It's much <laughs> little easier. insight in there to, to yeah, your, so, your uh, yeah. free time. I don't go to, yeah, don't go to McDonald's uh, <laughs> as much as they used to. So uh, yeah, no. But I think it's that whole whole expectation. It makes people people's lives easier, and, and I think tying into that is actually solving the problems that that I guess some. Um, some we we knew of and tried to, to hide and some we hadn't even really kind of come across before that that were highlighted during the pandemic so I think that the biggest one was was queues mm -hmm. and social distancing queues are, are kind of that number one complaint that guests have especially at a theme park you, you spend more time queuing than you do on rides so suddenly parks and operators needed to look at that and go how do we remove those physical cues because we can't have people standing next to each other for that long um, and that's where things like virtual queuing came in and just adapting to 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 use technology to, to solve a lot of the problems that already existed and, and unlock new um new benefits that we didn't have before so being able to have that direct um channel of communication you mentioned that 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 pre-visit experience you've got so much control around building that excitement understanding who's on your website what they're what they're clicking on what they're engaging with most but then they arrive on site and, and we've we've lost that channel yeah. there and that's that's obviously what we're we're out here to provide i love that yeah and it's really important isn't it because like you say once someone's in you've essentially lost them if they're not yeah. if they're not attached to their app or they're not like engaged with it in some way you're you're giving them it's harder to understand where people are where they're interacting, what their challenges are, what their frustrations are, what their positives are, I guess. So tell me some of the biggest challenges that attractions will bring to you that might shape what their app would look like. 
Yeah, that, that's a tough one because I think every every attraction is slightly different. And I mean, we, we work with theme parks, zoos, um, resorts, heritage attractions. They've all got their, their independent challenges. I, I think when I joined the industry, so I joined right in the middle of the pandemic. So early on, maybe uh, just before summer 2020. So right in the middle of it. And obviously everyone was panicking, going, how do we reopen safely? And a lot of that was around um, obviously, supporting social distancing with things like virtual queues, using heat map data of, of, of guest flow to, to understand where people are going and making sure that we're spreading people out. Now we're, fingers crossed, at, at the tail end of that. I think it's it's still highlighted a lot around the guest experience. So making sure guest flow is, is spread out so people aren't queuing for ages, they're not um, that they're not having to, to wait to get on rides or to see an attraction that they can, they can move around freely. Um, I think another thing, and it, 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 it's um, it's started to crop up a lot more, is, is ungated attractions. So whether that's free to enter attractions, um, uh, there's some theme parks that we work with where you can go in for free and you just pay per ride. Um, a lack of understanding of who's visiting them, so um, yes, yeah. so they they may get the the odd um, bit of information maybe on on uh, pre purchase of car parking, but largely they, they can maybe only understand 10 percent of their their visitor base which we need to unlock as much of that data as possible by having that app there is we can collect email addresses and behavioral data to attach to that which in turn just just opens up that that world of possibility to to engage guests and understand who they are but i think the biggest thing now that i've noticed is that people as we spoke about expectations changing do understand the importance and need for that that um digital presence and and that um experience on site so i think the biggest challenge that's coming to us now is how do we do this right because there's so many ways to approach building an app and it's about rethinking okay how can we not only benefit the guest and create a really good guest experience but how can we um obviously gain those benefits as as operators so that that data those insights and and often rushing into building an app can lead to just just an interactive map and and not much more and not giving much substance so yeah again from your experience i don't know from the the previous experience what it's like for you when you get um, operators coming to you because digital is so important now how they um yeah how they approach that and whether they want to jump in and just make sure they've got the basics or uh, it'd be really good to 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 understand how how you've approached that as well yeah i guess it's interesting. So as a, as a web design agency, we often get asked about apps um, and it's always, OK, well, we've had this idea and we think that we need an app. And you go, OK, well, let's pull that apart. What what does this app need to do for you? What does it need to deliver for you? And then essentially they will kind of explain something that their website already does. And so we're like, OK, well, you, you don't need to create an app that's a carbon copy of your website. It has to do something more for the guest you know they can go to your website and they can find that information what is what's the use of just replicating that in an app you know and I think that's the challenge is is understanding really what the benefit to the client uh, what the benefit sorry to the customer is and what the benefit to them is going to be and not just replicating what they already have because that doesn't make any sense so that that's what I see as the biggest challenge is do attractions and they're not just attractions because, you know, we work with a variety of people. Do, do people really understand what that need and what that benefit is going to be by having an app? I think that's that's what we get asked all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing that people often, until they start to speak to us, I think the biggest thing is, is that education piece around there's no point in doing this kind of just to have an app for, for the sake of it. It's really making sure that it's delivering value. And most people see the app, but then forget that we've not just spent a long time building an app dedicated to, to the attractions industry. We've also got a whole operator experience as well in the background where it's given those data and insights, allowing you to um, use the data you capture to communicate with guests. And, and I think that's that's one thing that, that education is so important because what we don't want is, is attractions taking that leap with um with build trying to build an app themselves and and have not really thought it through and we really want to make sure that they've got all the information they need to make an informed decision around 
how is this going to add value to to the guest experience and also how is it going to make our lives easier solve our biggest challenges and and obviously bring the benefits of increased revenue uh, increased nps so that there's a whole host and i think education is just that that big piece that we really have to 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 work with when we speak to attractions yeah definitely and i think what was really interesting so i listened to mark um, yep. founder of Attractions I listened to his uh, podcast interview that he did with the great guys at, um, at Attraction Pros uh, last week and I really liked how he described the approach to to what you guys do for app development as a holistic approach and this was really interesting because he described it as a lot of the time when Attractions want to develop an app it will sit with marketing and it will be very much in the marketing department's you know pile but where he said you know actually this is a this is a whole operational piece that this app could be and it was really interesting to hear you know how this app can can have an effect on so many different departments you know from um operations in terms of customer flow like you mentioned yes it is a marketing piece as well um but yes you can order you know your food so the beverage team need to be involved in in these decisions as well and I just I kind of thought yeah that, this is so much bigger isn't it it's such a it could be such an integrated piece that could really help so many different departments across the organization rather than it just being something that marketing pick up and go we need an app yeah 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 and I think that's again it's probably my biggest challenge when speaking to attractions is, is getting that message across and and um, yeah like you say it's very easy for marketing to to have um own the app and and do a good job with it but in that that siloed approach they they miss out on so many opportunities and and just from from the the um deployments we've done and, and and even um attractions that have apps with different providers that have, have done it right or built it themselves is the best ones are where it, it really does span the entire guest experience which as you mentioned it, it spans the whole team at that attraction so retail um food and beverage mm-hmm. operations ride operators um even even senior management in terms of planning expansion understanding what guests are doing where they're spending the time it really is yeah that that holistic approach to to the whole digital strategy and i think it also ties into again um what you you and the team do is tying the whole journey together so mm-hmm. it's a seamless digital experience from the moment they see an advert online to going through to the website to purchasing their tickets uploading their tickets and 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 uh, into the app using scanning it when they arrive using the app through the whole experience and then obviously the data that we've captured from the the start of the journey so the, the booking phase to the app phase is then continuing to to own that relationship going forward and being able to communicate with them so you want people to come back you want them to bring friends and family you want them to purchase season passes so by creating that that end-to-end guest journey you've then got full control to to engage and and influence the the guests that are visiting with you yeah it's really powerful isn't it when you when you actually timeline that journey through that's a really powerful to be able to contain that data for so long here's a question for you uh, now, this is something that's come up um, a few times when I've had guests on. Um, and I think, actually, it was one of our guests' unpopular opinions. Hmm. <laughs> I need to check that out. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. How do you get the balance right of wanting guests to engage with the app, but not trying to detract their attention from the attraction that they're currently in? So this was definitely, I, I can remember now, it was, it was the interview that we carried out with Edinburgh Zoo. And yeah. <laughs> um, the the unpopular opinion was I just I don't I won't want people off of their phones while they're they're yeah. here I don't want them on their phones you know I want them to be present I want them to be in the moment um, and I, so I guess that's really tricky isn't it like how do you do that Yeah um, and, and do you know what that that's quite a, a common early objection that 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 will come up against and I think. The, the 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 kind of highlight is is we don't want people on the phones the whole time. Um, we don't want them staring at the, the the phone. We want them experiencing it. We want to enhance that experience. I think there's a few ways we we do that, and and, and an app does that. Is firstly, it's getting people from A to B quicker. So let's say we're we're at the zoo and we want to go find the penguins. So a paper map. Obviously, we can talk about the sustainability and the, the 
printed maps aren't, aren't great for the environment and cost money. Having the app there, we've got rather than having to rotate the map, you've got the whole family standing around it is we can quickly um, find where we want to go and use the wayfinding um, abilities to, to get to see the animals quicker so we don't miss the, the keeper talks, the, the animal feeding time. So it's removing um, removing some of those challenges to, to allow people to actually spend more time engaging, whether that's getting on the ride, seeing the animals, rather than all the, the, the little bits in between. Um, I think the other thing is reducing, as I mentioned, some of those those um, real pain points around queuing. So let's say the kids are on, on the playground and you want to go and order food. Normally you'd have to queue, but now with a mobile app you can stand there watch your kids play in they can have fun you can order your food and you'll get an alert to say right go and pick it up now and you've just saved all of that time where the kids would be kicking and screaming because you, you're dragging them away from the playground that you can just sit back order your food and, and wait for it to be ready um and then the other aspect and the third aspect that kind of ties it all together is enhancing the experience so when people are looking at let's say some of the animals is that we can supplement that with with audio and video guides to to just really educate and that's one big thing that we work with zoos on is more than just having kind of the the name plaque and the the name in latin is is how can we engage especially a younger audience and, and educate them and start to promote those conservation initiatives which which obviously drives revenue so there's a few different areas but i think ultimately we just want to enhance that physical experience we're not here to replace it um, and i think hopefully all, all of the attractions that we work with will, will affirm that and and understand that it helps um it's really helped engage guests in a better way um, but still hasn't taken away because you, you can't replace the, the feeling of seeing your favourite animal for the first time or going on that roller coaster. So it's, it's all about being that, that companion to, to make that experience better and not take away from it. That's a great word. A, a digital companion. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah, actually pre absolutely. prefer that to app. We should all use Yeah, there you go. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, uh, yeah, I'll rebrand my, uh, re my, um, <laughs> my, my, my sales material, but yeah, I, I think it, that's exactly what it is. And yeah, um, and yeah, we're here to supplement and enhance it, not not take away from it or replace it. Yeah, it's great. And there's some great benefits in there as well, just from, from mm. talking about that. You know, I could it was interesting. I could see myself kind of at the playground waiting for my kids. Yeah. You know, I could, yeah. I could put myself <laughs> in that situation. Um, something that you touched on, actually, was sustainability. And I'd really like to talk about this because so we had... Um, I mean, sustainability is something that all attractions need to be really focused on and anyway. But we had a really great past episode uh, on this specifically with Lucy Downing and Sue Pennington from Holcomb Hall. And they talked through, um, I mean, that, that phenomenal sustainability policies that they have in place there and um, their wonder program that they've initiated there, which is incredible. There's a really good case study on your website that I've read a number of times now from Zoo Tampa. Yep. I would really love to hear a little bit more about this because it does some really incredibly positive things for the environment and sustainability around the zoo. And, and they've made some like quite phenomenal cost savings as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, I think that the, the, the case really kind of came off the back of, I think it was Greenloop. Um, me, Mark and the team at, at um, Zoo Tampa um, did a talk just around how the having a digital presence like that and having a mobile app can um help with sustainability so yeah um hopefully i'm quoting it right so i think um the, the kind of amazing results that even blew me and mark away when, when we heard them was that um zoo tampa were able to save fifty thousand dollars a year which is just phenomenal especially for, for uh, a charity a zoo um but they're they're cutting their um print waste by 95 percent and um, it's almost nothing and what that has done obviously apart from having that immediate impact on um on on the reduced print and, and the cost savings is that there's two things that's happened obviously those cost savings can now be redirected to something much more important um whether that be the conservation initiatives that they run and um, locally and um, to, to, to them or obviously internationally that they're involved in. But also the, the way they went about it was not only digitizing maps and not printing maps anymore, but, but pushing for, for digitized tickets. So they, um, they now get people to um, upload their tickets into the mobile app 
And that means that more people, because that uh, the, the, the there's a need now to to, um, to to have everything within the app, that they now can communicate those conservation initiatives because they've got that direct channel during the visit, during the experience. So they can educate and and really capture the the whole audience. Um, and I think it's not just Zoo Tamper, obviously. That yeah, absolutely incredible results that they've seen. But we've seen a lot of attractions, um, not just zoos. Um, but, but theme parks as well. In some some of our our um, partnered attractions, reducing um, printed like guest printed um, information completely. So so the only option is is that digital uh, companion. We'll call it now. I like that one. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's been a real shift, and it it's so important. And I think um, it, it's it's been ever present recently, but it's, it's, it's something we need to continue to think about um, sustainability. And it all ties back to those expectations as well. And, and the digital natives especially is that people either expect or are really comfortable now um, in the majority of cases using a, a digital channel. So if it makes their life easier, if it enhances the experience, then it's a perfect way to to channel people in that direction rather than picking up a printed map and and i know a lot of a lot of parks that haven't uh, are on that path now from handing out loads of, of maps to now just printing maybe 10 15 percent of what they used to just to have it on hand um but but i think over the next couple of years especially we're, we're just going to see that shift towards 100 percent digital because it has all the added benefits, um, not only just of the sustainability angle as well. Yeah, I, I mean, it's phenomenal, isn't it? The the cost savings and the and mm. the the advantages to sustainability that that can bring. I mean, I think it's important to acknowledge that you know we probably talk from a place of privilege that we yeah. have mobile phones and we we know how to use them. You know, and you know there will be a lot of people out there that it's not accessible for them. So there is still a place for printed maps. Um, yeah. But to be able to save so much and channel that into other things is just incredible. Um, who knew that an app could be so valuable? Who knew? And yeah, it's <laughs> it's just been yeah, it's been amazing to see. And I think the results like that when when we can save charities money through 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 our our product, it's it's obviously yeah. Um, it's very re- rewarding to see, and 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 yeah, I, I think always got a soft spot when working with zoos because I know there is that that opportunity out there to to really help them. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go back a little bit to what we yep. talked about earlier about some of the common challenges that attractions bring you, and and kind of what I mentioned as well about how we often get asked, "Hey, I need an app," but then it's not really they're not really very clear about what that app needs to do. What do you need to understand from an attraction to be able to work out what would be the perfect solution for them? Like, what do they need to think about before they come to speak to you? Yeah, well, there's, there's, there is a lot to think about, and that, that's that's what we're here to, to help with. I think, um, firstly, it's it's really zooming out a little bit, um, and we did run a, a bit of an initiative last year to help attractions around mapping out the entire digital guest journey because uh, as we mentioned that timeline is is really powerful but we almost want to see it as a bit of a flywheel rather than a an end-to-end timeline because what we want to do is make sure the app is connecting the start and the end of the visit but ties it all back together um so i think firstly just just mapping out understanding what technology they're currently using um so so things like um ticketing providers is incredibly important because we want to be able to integrate with them um through to, to point of sale crm systems once we've started to tie that together it's then to really look at guest feedback um and and feedback from the wider team as well when we look at that holistic approach to, to understand okay what what challenges can we solve so what are the biggest pain points for the guest experience right now and and th- like i said they'll differ for, for each attraction but once you can pinpoint those whether that be queue times whether that be everyone is going to the same food outlet um at lunch and we're just getting people waiting around for ages whether that be um that that the animals aren't always visible it's like how how can we communicate with them so uh, how can we communicate with guests to to let them know when the animals might be visible um or when there's the next keeper talk so they can make sure that they can they can um, obviously see the animals they've gone there to see 
I think obviously that's just a flavor of some of the, the problems, but I think most importantly is, is, is mapping that guest journey out and then pinpointing where an app is going to be able to solve those problems. There'll be some added benefits along the way. And once you've got that, and, and that's what we're here to help um, help attractions do, is then you can start to really evaluate the process of, okay, how do we go about implementing an app? So it's not just let's launch an app in the app store. It's how do we market that properly? Because otherwise, if you don't explain the benefits or, or the reasons behind the launch of the app, people won't download it if you don't make it visible. So if you don't promote it when people are purchasing tickets, when they're, they're receiving the ticket confirmation, when they arrive on site. So again, it's that holistic approach that, that attractions need to just zoom out a little bit, understand what they're currently doing identify those pain points and then start to evaluate the solutions that are out there. So there's kind of three approaches that we often see. Um, there's the do it yourself, um, which larger attractions uh, no doubt have, have the capital to throw at that kind of project. It takes millions of pounds of, of investment and, and years of work to, to get a solution to, to be that world-class solution. And, and obviously um Mark and the team at Attractions I have, have learned that the, the hard way, I guess. Um, they, they've gone and done that so other attractions don't have to. There's, there's bringing in, in teams to help with that, um, which especially with an app for, for a visitor attraction, it's such a specific thing. So um, uh, things that need to be considered like battery life conservation. So it's not just like ordering a Domino's and then you can put your phone away. You're out for the whole day. You need to make sure that your battery life will last um, and there's loads of work just around optimizing that things like being an offline solution as well that that often um someone coming in wouldn't really understand if they're not from the attraction space is that we know you can go to a lot of visitor attractions and, and i think most will admit themselves there's always going to be patchy signal um in some places so we need to make sure that 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 experience doesn't uh, isn't impacted because of that um and then I think finally is, is ourselves um, and, 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 and obviously platforms like ourselves. So like I said, that there's been loads of investment gone into the platform and it now means that we can scale that out to, to attractions very quickly. Um, and they're kind of the three, um, three approaches that, that, that people will look at. So yeah, I guess looking at their current guest journey and then starting to evaluate the approach to, to how to launch a mobile app. Um, and that's, they're the two big areas that, that I guess attractions will look at on that journey. That's brilliant. Thank you for detailing that out for us. It's interesting because it's a really similar process that we go through when we're asking mm. about, you know, websites at the start. Yeah. You know, what technology are you already using? What does it need to integrate with? What what are your challenges? You know, what are your customers saying are big issues with stuff? And and again, taking that real holistic approach and making sure that everybody is is having their say and what gets produced and what is going to be of benefit. So. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, we always ask our guests that come on the podcast if they um, can share a book that they love with us, something they love, something that's influenced their career in some way. It can be personal. It can be work related. What have you got to share with us? Yeah, so I know that I think I've seen um, Mark Ellis uh, and, and Johnny both recommended. I think Mark went to the extreme of recommending 43 books, I, I think. Um, I, know, I know it was obviously part of a larger series. And I could have easily done maybe not 43, but a few. Um, but I have taken it down to, to one book, um, which is Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear. I don't know whether it's been recommended before, um, but I picked this. In fact, I listened to it on audiobook um, first and then loved it that much that I bought the physical copy. Um, I think it's it's impacted um, so many areas of my life, personally, professionally. I think it's, I won't give too much away, people should read it, um, but it's all about making change. So whether that be implementing new habits, getting rid of old ones, it, it's all, there's so much uh, really useful information and tips in there that a lot of books tend to, to waffle on and, and, and pad it out. This is, is, page to page um really actionable advice um on making change implementing change and, and, and basically just starting off small um and then yeah like you say look back and, and see all those changes that come together to, to have that big impact so uh, that's that's my one recommendation that i'll stick to 
one book recommendation did you hear that listeners one book well yeah, done it David. was hard it was hard <laughs> following instructions though yeah <laughs> it's a great book um i have read that book and it yeah. is an awesome book i really like it it's it's about marginal gains really isn't it yeah. it's about being one percent better one percent better mm-hmm. all the time and 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 that is something that I think is really important rather than taking a massive jump into trying to do something huge and, and that looks really scary. Um, but yeah, it's a big thing about celebrating your progress in there. So that's one yeah. that we all should take away from today. Thank you. As ever, if you want to win a copy of that book, if you head over to our Twitter account and you retweet this episode announcement with the words, I want Jacob's book, then you will be in with the chance of winning it Jacob thank you I've really enjoyed our talk today um it's really interesting to see I think how aligned our both of our approaches are and I hope that our listeners today will take away from this um how important and how beneficial an app can actually be as long as it's thought out and processed and constructed in the right way (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've summed that up uh, perfectly. So, uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to talk about it today. And, uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on the podcast. Thanks for listening to Skip the Queue. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a five-star review. It really helps others find us. And remember to follow us on Twitter for your chance to win the books that have been mentioned. Skip the Queue is brought to you by Rubber Cheese, a digital agency that builds remarkable systems and websites for attractions that helps them increase their visitor numbers. You can find show notes and transcriptions from this episode and more over on our website, rubbercheese.com forward slash podcast.